Bob, if it was possible that believers could fall away, why does Philippians 1.6 teach that God will finish the work that he has begun in us? Well, that is a common interpretation of Philippians 1.6, but it's not the only interpretation in the commentary literature, and it's not the one that fits the context best. Um, I'll start in Philippians 1.3 where Paul says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. And then verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, the first thing to notice is what is the good work? He who began a good work in you. The good work goes back to verse 5, where he is thankful and praying for them in light of their fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Their fellowship in the gospel, the word fellowship is koinonia, it means sharing. They shared in Paul's gospel ministry by sending money to support his gospel ministry. He makes that clear all through the book. In Philippians 4.17, he talks about the fact that he's not seeking the gift, but that which accrues to their account at the judgment seat of Christ. They were a church that was supporting financially Paul's gospel ministry. And what he's saying in verse 6 is he's confident that the one who began this good work of supporting his gospel ministry will complete it, that is, this, the fruit of their investment in his gospel ministry until the day of Christ Jesus. And by the way, the day of Christ Jesus, the word hemera all by itself, day, often refers to the judgment seat of Christ. But the day of Christ Jesus or the day of Jesus Christ always refers to the bema, the judgment seat of Christ. I remember when I heard at the pre-trib study group, Dr. Dick Mayhew talking about the day of the Lord. And he said, as an aside, by the way, the day of the Lord Jesus or the day of Jesus Christ or the day of Christ Jesus, those expressions are not the same as the day of the Lord. Those refer to the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema. And he's absolutely right. And that's prominent in the book of Philippians. It appears multiple times in the book of Philippians. Paul's concern is that their investment in his gospel ministry would have repercussions all the way to the judgment seat of Christ. And you know the beautiful thing is as people read the book of Philippians today, their rewards are still rolling toward the judgment seat of Christ. Because this book still exists because, in part, the financial stewardship of the church in Philippi. To me, that's an awesome truth. And the idea that this is saying that every believer is going to have some sort of guaranteed sanctification is not at all taught by the verses, and it's ridiculous on its face. Okay, let's say that's true then. Well, then why would any Christian sin at all, right? If God guarantees our sanctification, why wouldn't he guarantee perfection? Why would he guarantee kind of mediocrity, right? I mean, how can anybody explain that unless... There's some sort of accountability and failure is possible in the Christian life. And that what God guarantees is that he guarantees our eternal destiny and he guarantees he's going to reward us for what we've done in service for him. But, but the idea that there's some sort of floor under our sanctification and that we won't drop below some certain level, it's not taught anywhere in Scripture and it's a, it's a crazy notion. 